So my name is Manuel Schaffner, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Spectroplast. And what we do is uh, silicon 3D printing. So we developed a technology basically that allows us to render any silicones light sensitive. And with this, we can actually print pure silicone that's mainly used for industrial application. And now we're only also slowly moving into medical and healthcare application. Yeah, so on the industrial side, we do a lot of uh, sealants gaskets. Um, silicones are often used for yeah, sealants in, in, in this industry automotive parts, but even watches contain these sealants. Um, so these are mostly tiny, tiny parts that you don't see in a product because they're hidden as sealant. Um, but then on the technical, on the, on the medical and healthcare side, we do a lot of um, prosthetics. Uh, we call these life enhancing products. So these are any kind of products that need to be customized and tailored basically to the needs of a, of a patient. This can be, uh, you know, prosthetics, liners, uh, stuff like this. But then we also do a lot of um, um, audiology products. These are basically hearing aids, uh, hearing protection, customized headphone sleeves, uh, basically anything that's also tailored to fit your ear perfectly. And we are also slowly moving into what we call life saving products. And these are products that are uh, hopefully will be used inside the body as medical implants as customized implants, yes. How did you make the jump into founding your own startup? That's a good question. I think it was um, based on a personal need. When I started my PhD here at ETH Zurich, uh, I was actually desperately looking for a 3D printer that can print silicones because uh, we wanted to do some um, research uh, with uh, customized silicone parts. Um, and I was surprised that there was nothing on the market. And um, since my background is in chemistry, I figured this would be a nice project to spend the next you know, several years of my PhD. And this is basically what we then did. And uh, first it was just thought of actually, you know, just developing a technology for in-house use for, um, as a well basis for our research. But then at some point we got a lot of traction from the industry. So we had companies calling us up, this, the phone didn't stop ringing anymore. And all of a sudden we realized also when we compared our technology to what's really out there or what was out there two or three years ago on the market, we realized we had something probably a bit more um, powerful or, or with a bigger potential than you know, we expected initially. And that's when we decided to uh, incorporate the company, um, get first customers in. Yeah, that's how it, how it went. How was your experience with switching from science to entrepreneurship? Um, I would say it was it was not really a, a big transition because um, I'm even though I'm a scientist by training, I'm more an entrepreneur by heart, and uh, therefore also my entire research was always um, based on on application driven problems. I would say. And for me, it was always important to maybe have a transfer of, of this research to, you know, give also something back to, to, to society, basically. So it was not a big, big step uh, in, in on, on um, well, basically on the attitude side. But then on the flip side, um, all of a sudden it became serious when you have first customers, you know, asking for the parts uh, and things like this. So there was definitely um, a bit of transition and adaptation period when we first got in contact with customers and uh, things became a bit more serious at this stage. How well did your studies um, at university prepare you to found your startup? I would say um, the studies, my background, also the, 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 the training I got here at ETH was of, 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 of big help, that's for sure. Um, it, you know, it, it first of all, it, it allows you, or it allowed me at least, to um, understand the problem, break it down, try to figure out solutions. Um, so it was really this, this um, on one side, critical thinking, but then also problem-solving attitude that we learned or, or mindset. This was really helpful for sure. Plus the, you know, the profound um, studies, basically in, in in basic chemistry, which was really um, the 
basis of, of spectroplasty. Yeah. How did you learn how to be an entrepreneur? I would say the initially you're not really aware of what you know uh, what special kills you need or how this just develops initially um, which is also a good thing so you're basically you know a bit naive initially I would say and then it, it just starts developing um, it was for me it was super interesting I'm open-minded person and I'm, I'm always uh, eager to learn new things in, in this respect um, and, and so it was for me, not really a, a barrier, but more a challenge. And, and this is really something I, I personally liked. Um, and, you know, this also gives you a bit more diff different task changes in, in your daily work. And this was something that, that I was actually looking for also. And um, I would say I was, I was aware of this to some extent when we started the company. Um, and, and then you just, you know, start learning by doing, and that's actually the fun part. Um, the best advice I would say we got was um, that we should not underestimate, um, you know, what, what you basically developed. It's whenever you have something in your hands or on your hands, um, and it, I mean, you, you develop it, for you it's clear how it works, um, you are kind of in a, in a bubble at this stage. But then when you bring this technology to the outside world in, in that respect, uh, you often have a, a kind of a mismatch in, 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 in perception of, of the value that, that this actually, you know, this really has. And uh, we had one advisor that really um, helped us in, in, in that regard and supported us and, and, you know, said, just don't undersell yourself in this respect. I think this, this was um, a, a big or an important um, advice we got early on. What was um, a piece of advice that you found didn't work for you? That's a, that's a difficult question. Um, you get a lot of advices from many different people and I think a lot of, of the advices you get is actually is not applicable to yourself. So you start developing, you know, or you start having a filter system basically where you just disregard um, advice that's, I wouldn't call it the bad advice, it just doesn't, it's not applicable to you at this case or in this scenario. One thing that, that we always learned early on in all these uh, startup training, startup trainings is, is, is the, the pitch. And I, I fully agree that, you know, the, the few minutes that you have to really bring across the point of your startup is, is, is really critical and, and crucial to get investments in, but it should not be, there should be a bit more to the, to the you know, meat to the bone than, 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 than just a nice story. So sometimes just focusing on this three minute pitch put, or might portray a wrong image. And, and that's what I, no retrospective would say is um, was probably an advice I didn't take too seriously, just to f only focus on the pitch. For us, it was super important to always have um, uh, you know a, a working core technology as a basis because that's at the end really uh, it's going to make basically the the, the, the flip you know, if if you're successful or not, not the nice story behind, or at least I mean it's it, it's a nice mix of it, but it should not only be um, story story based. How do you think the expectation of being an entrepreneur differs from reality? Um, probably in the sense that um, entrepreneurship is is something that a lot of people uh, strive are striving for because they think it's um, you know it's fun because you're your own your own boss and you know you, you can basically do whatever you want to do, which is uh, definitely, these are definitely benefits, um, but, but that's just really one-sided if you only look at this. Um, so also the entrepreneurship itself, the way people st tell the story about this is, is, is a bit biased towards just the benefits of it. Um, there's definitely also um, downsides to it, you know, the constant grind, uh, the, the, the 
basically that, that all problems basically are getting distilled and uh, at, at, at the end end up on your desk. So it's, it's also important to, to basically, uh, you know, portray the image that it's not just a fun um, kind of nice lifestyle to, to be an entrepreneur, but then there's also definitely a lot of work involved and um, yeah, just a constant grind. And that's probably, this, th this other side is probably not so clear to many people, I would say. What advice do you have for someone who is just getting started with his or her own startup? Um, definitely start even earlier with customer contacts, uh, really bringing out um, or at least trying to understand what the market really needs. That, that, that's critical because uh, a lot of people invest a lot of time and resources in developing you know, something that they personally like and they're personally involved. And, and uh, this, in, 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 in some incidences, might not be the same as the market is basically expecting. Um, and I would just say, the earlier you get out there, the earlier you learn, the earlier you fail, and the earlier you can adapt, the quicker you are. And, and, and speed is, is, is critical. What I'm all, all, also always saying is, is there is no you know, recipe. You cannot say you have to follow ABC, uh, that, that, that it works, or even the incorporation itself, or, or, or finding the team, it, there's, there's not a protocol that you can just simply follow. Um, so it, it has to be a personal drive, um, and, and you also have to be willing to, you know, solve your own problems. And a simple problem might just be finding the first customer, finding, you know, your co-founder. And if you're at this early stage and not really, um, you know, willing to go out there, talk to people, either on the team side or on the customer side, then it becomes difficult. So um, I would say that that's really the key message that I also try to bring out there is, 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 is you have to be involved. It has to be something that you want to push. Um, and and uh, therefore, yeah, that's basically, that's basically the key start is really figure out where you are with your technology, figure out who is interested to join you to do this journey together, but who's also willing to actually at the end, you know, put money on your table on the table for your product or your service that you develop. And that's that's critical to to make this first jump in the um, in the unknown basically early on. What's your experience with founding your startup here in Switzerland? There is uh, definitely many advantages. I mean, we get a lot of support from from the government. We get support from from ETH. Uh, we there is a, a nice network of investors around. That's for sure. Um, you know, people also when you just talk to friends, they understand what entrepreneurship is to an extent. So, so that there's also you know less um, any kind of barriers that that's not really given. So Switzerland is, is definitely um, a fastly developing and, and growing ecosystem uh, in Europe regarding entrepreneurship. In general, I would say we are a bit less or, or a bit more risk averse. Um, and interactions are maybe a bit less between startups, but this is also, you know, this, this is on a, on a personal basis. I mean, nobody hinders you from talking to other people. That's not the case, but the, the exchange or, 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 or interactions is, um, from, from my experience in, in for example, in, in the States, in Boston, was a bit more in that regard, just open discussions and, you know, just general ex exchange over experiences and, and things like this. That's something that we could probably improve a bit. But then um, the other thing is that that's also something we mentioned early on uh, with the storytelling. Yeah. So uh, in, in, in Europe, maybe even in Switzerland a bit more, we are less braggy about our technology, our, 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 our startups. And this, this, this can also be healthy 
in a way that you don't, you know, have too high expectations. Uh, on the flip side, this can also limit your growth. But I would say at the end, it's really also a personal decision how you want to do this. You can also have, you know, a great story telling and, 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 and uh, here. So it's, it's just a different mindset, I would say. What are dreams that you have for your startup and for you personally as an entrepreneur? So let's let's start with the startup. The dream I have for Spectroplast is really to see the technology out there used and you know bringing really value and 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 value to to society and this can be direct through you know just having the technology somewhere hidden in a in a, in a factory and it just produces parts or uh, directly through Spectroplast that we produce parts that are really improving the lives of people at the end uh, as we want to move the technology into the medical sector. That's really the big dream, uh, dream I have for Spectroplast. But then as an entrepreneur, what's, what's even more important to me is, is also to have, you know, to build up a, a team with a culture that is really eager to, well, that is just, you know, happy to be part of this story. And, and this is something that I look for when, I, when we hire new people. And that's also something that I personally have on, on, on a rather high level. So this, this you know, urge in the morning to get out of bed, actually you know, be happy in what you do 12 hours a day, that's, that's something that, that is, is really fulfilling. And that's something I wish also to build up you know, in a team.